Kombucha. It's easy to make, but what kind of tea should you use? There's lots of conflicting information out there, so let's put it to the test. We are doing science, microbiology to be specific, and Microbiology 101 says do not contaminate. What's the best way to avoid contamination? Kill it with fire. Not only am I boiling my mason jar lids, I'm baking the jars at 250 degrees Celsius for over an hour. On to the experiment itself, we're going to be inoculating different types of sweet tea. They're all going to use the same amount of sugar, 2 tablespoons or 28 grams per 600 milliliters. Why 600 milliliters? My jars wouldn't hold much more than that. Why 28 grams of sugar? This worked out to be just shy of 50 grams per liter, which has been deemed optimal in a scientific paper I found about kombucha. I'll put a link to it in the details below. This experiment is going to examine three different types of tea and three different concentrations of each type. The three I'm using are the favorite, black tea, the other favorite, green tea, and a wild card, herbal tea. In this case, I'm going to try chamomile. All three are organic, cost the same, and are made by the same company. That didn't sponsor this video, although they're welcome to. All right, black tea. I'm going to test one, two, and three bags steeped for three minutes each. They're being steeped with the sugar pre-added in 500 milliliters of boiling water. I gently placed the bag in, left it for the three minutes, and then pulled it straight out without stirring or agitation. And then I repeated for the two bag and three bag jars. Labels are a must for any proper experiment, preferably a combination of letters and numbers. I was lucky to have these leftover face paints from the Korean Olympics. On to the green tea, same as black, one, two, and three bags, three minutes each. Our sterilized lids will keep anything unwanted from growing in here while the tea cools down. Last up, chamomile tea. Three jars, one, two, and three bags. Any real experiment needs a control. In this case, just boiled water and sugar. I added the sugar after filming because I forgot at the time. The next day, everything has been cooled to 22 degrees Celsius, or room temperature, with lids on to stay fresh. So what are we inoculating with? What's the starter culture? My own mature kombucha. The starter tea is a little on the sour side, but otherwise it's the same as what you might be able to find in a store. This one's real bubbly, pretty active. One hundred milliliters of starter tea is going to go into every jar with five hundred milliliters of sweetened tea, giving us six hundred milliliters total. And of course, we'll add the same amount to the control. The last step is to cover these jars while still allowing air in. So this is to keep the unwanted things out, like mold and unwanted bacteria. Kombucha is an anaerobic culture. In other words, it needs oxygen, so we can't seal it tight. Paper towels and rubber bands may not be the fanciest, but they get the job done. There they are, all lined up. These were all stored in a warm, relatively dry location. Here we are, day two. Take a good look. Things haven't changed that much. It's gotten a little bit cloudy, 
in all the samples, but there really isn't a difference between the different T-types at this point. Day four, now things are starting to happen. Obvious growth can be seen in all of the jars, even the control. You can see some wispy stuff growing on the bottom. On to day five and we have significant growth on the top of these teas. Look at B1. And the green tea is clearly starting to pull away while the chamomile lags behind. By day nine, there was significant scoby floating on top. It's still quite thin on the black tea, but take a look at the green tea. This is significant growth. Not so much for the herbal tea. Here we are, day 24, over three weeks later. Let's see how things turned out. I decided to whip out the pH meter to get a better indication of the progress of each culture. The black tea samples all had a pretty similar pH, and this meter could easily be off by 0.1 anyways. I think the biggest difference between tea samples can be seen in the SCOBY thickness. Interestingly, the highest growth can be seen in the sample with only one tea bag. But on the other side of the thickness spectrum, Take a look at these beasts, so thick. All the green tea samples showed huge SCOBY growth. The single tea bag sample seemed to grow in kind of this wedge shape, but the other two, look at that, at least an inch thick. Coming in last place is the herbal tea. But there's still growth here, and the pH dropped in all the samples, so don't let anyone tell you that you can't make chamomile kombucha. I've gotta say though, the scoby mask growing on top stayed pretty thin. You know, I think the biggest surprise here was actually the control. Even it produced a thin, goobery film. Apparently, there were enough nutrients in the starter tea alone that the fermentation could continue. In conclusion, it looks like the green tea can produce a much thicker SCOBY in much less time. Although I should be clear, all of the teas tested here decreased in pH to nearly the same point. They all fermented, they all made kombucha. But if you're after a SCOBY with some heft, Green tea looks like it's going to get the job done. Alright, that's it for this experiment. I hope you learned something and I definitely hope you try making kombucha. It's ridiculously simple and it costs pennies to make it home. I'm always looking for a new ferment to experiment on, so leave any suggestions in the comments. Happy fermenting! Thanks for watching.